Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're breaking down the hottest build on Hell Divers 2. Wave. Motion. I got it! <laughs> Thematically named after space battleship Yamato's planet destroying super weapon, it shines so bright you might need to get some shades ready, but don't be afraid to double up because I brought enough for everybody. And like all my builds, these are always updated in my Discord first. So make sure you join to keep up to date with what I'm doing and for when I announce my streams. We also broke this one down on stream versus the automatons and terminids on tier 9 with all four people cooking the entire screen using the same build. We've done this on every patch and with every enemy set so far and is entirely capable of solo carrying any game that you bring it to, but it's just focused directly on tier nine hell dive difficulty, but downscaling to anything below that will only make it perform even better. This is definitively the most thematic and fun build that I play and that's what makes it the true meta. And of course that means we're lighting this off with some super secret technology about how laser weapons really work. They all shoot for different durations in different climates with hot and normal being very close and cold seeing the only real big difference in firing time. And the climates ended up mainly affecting the cool off of the heat sinks. And all reused heat sinks for laser weapons seem to degrade over time as you use them more and more, meaning a shorter firing duration and a longer cool off time. When we look at a laser cannon that's been heated and cooled five and ten times and then compare it to a fresh heat sink, we start seeing as much as two seconds of lost beam in time. I ran this test by making my UI massive and then shooting to the same point of the battery like, you know, the amount of times and then I blew the heat sink for consistency. And it didn't end up mattering if I shot into the white zone or the red, it just ended up decaying at about the same rate. And I talked to my friend Reginald about this because he was doing an only beams video as well. And after some tests, we kind of found the same things, but also had anomalies where it would randomly last longer or shorter durations. So if anyone knows the answer to why like the 10th heat sink would last longer than the fifth, sometimes and only sometimes, I'd really appreciate the help because I just want to move on to the next thing and I feel like I've put way too much time into heat sink technology. This also means that you want to spin your heat sinks right before you pick up a supply or ammo pack to make sure that you get the most out of your weapon. This still means that you take up way less resources than a normal weapon and to me that makes all the laser weapons amazing for team play and the build synergy makes it so that this default loadout can be brought versus both factions and hard carry. The main weapons I bring with this are the sickle, laser pistol, and laser cannon. The sickle rounds out with this kit really needed consistent accurate light enemy removal and when you're using the sickle you want to sight it in at 100 meters this ended up being my personal preference after a recommendation from chat and even from 25 to 50 meters when you have it sighted in at 100 you feel like you're on 100 and it just feels way better to use like this and even though it is full auto if you shoot it in burst it can keep it accurate at like crazy long ranges and shot dispersion wise like if you do just full auto even at like 100 meters plus it never really goes outside of the red bars within the sight so it just stays really accurate. We also use the laser pistol even though it kind of sucks just because it's cool it fits the build's theme. Plus anytime you come across like a jetpack guy it just one shots them so you have that going for you. And we always take the stun grenade because it sets up the rest of our kit just to perform way better and makes the 500 kg bombs way more consistent. Armor passive wise we always lock in with engineer or scout. Laser weapons are very quiet by default when crouched so you can avoid pulling random patrols with good play but scout still makes games go a lot smoother. The main reason I like having the engineering perk is more stun grenades let you carry even harder. They're so powerful in this build. But no matter what, you always want to wear light armor because movement speed and stamina regeneration are the most valuable things in the entire game. And most of the situations you would end up dying in medium or heavy armor never would have happened in the first place because better positioning will always make you do better with any build. And that's also why you always want to make sure that you have the stamina booster active. But if someone else brings it, vitality is your second best option. And after that, you can kind of just run whatever you feel like. But drip wise, I get if you just want to look cool instead, because that's the true meta end game of any horde shooter really. But moving on to stratagems versus both factions, you can run the same build, but it just performs better with slight variations. And starting with the Terminids, we always want to bring the 500 kg bomb. Usually it's inconsistent, but combined with the stun grenade, it became one of the most consistent strikes for instantly dealing with Bile Titans. And it's amazing at small patrols as well. If you use line of sight, you can throw your stun grenade and then strike on top of that and just stop a patrol from doing anything altogether. And it also lets you trivialize most engagements when they spiral out of control. Now the orbital laser cannon is very thematic to the build and is amazing at removing light medium but struggles with bile titans and chargers unless you throw four of them at the same time so if you're playing in a pre-made that ends up being like really cool and just a huge screen reset but in general the orbital rail cannon strike ends up pulling ahead by quite a bit if you're just running the build alone and you still see a laser before it strikes so close enough 
You also consistently one-shot Vile Titans by blowing their sacks out with a laser cannon before you rail cannon strike, just like the Scorcher tech we used to use. The laser cannon also cooks chargers after their leg armor gets removed, but can easily take them out from the back as well. The most important thing is that this build obliterates nurses and crushes artillery bugs. I was wrong about the spawn set. I think that artillery is probably the most dangerous in a four man now because everyone has to look up, which I learned is our greatest weakness. Looking up becomes a little bit of a problem when you have to start removing your shades because they're too heavy and weigh your head down. This has become my greatest greatest weakness. So, being able to remove that threat when it does happen is where you really shine, and the ability to blow Brood Commander and Hive Guard heads off like Riley Reed doesn't hurt either. These priority targets can snowball a game out of control, so being able to handle them quickly is massive for your team. It also cooks light armor really fast, but you should try to use your sickle for that so you don't overuse your heat sink, and that's also where your laser guard dog pulls up in a big way. It kills off most of the small enemies for you so you never have to think about them, and gives you enough space to focus on the real threats. Plus, when things go south and you're running away screaming, it'll keep killing for you, and that's really all you need at the end of the day. Now, I've never really struggled versus the Terminids with this build even before the laser cannon buff, and it's been one of my favorites since launch, but that doesn't mean that you should sleep on it versus the automatons, because with some minor changes, it does even better versus them than the Terminates, but we still use the Sickle for Soldier Bot removal because it's just so powerful. We also mainly use the Orbital Laser because it's so amazing at removing all of the biggest threats and could kill a ton of tanks, hulks, and devastators by itself, and ends up being a bad call and reset every time you use it, and if you combine it with a Cluster Bomb, it helps it keep on target. We ended up replacing the 500 kg Bomba with this versus the bot simply for its massive area of effect. It really stopped that like massive devastators from being able to shoot in on you and instantly kills all of the life bots, which prevents more flares from getting called in and helps keep situations manageable. You can also replace this with the normal Ego Strike if you need to break buildings, but the combination of either helps the orbital laser stay on focus, killing what you need it to. And the laser cannon also has a hidden jutsu secret technique. The stun laser. This just lets you cook off hulks really fast by immobilizing them. Just make sure you land it near their feet or in front of them because sometimes if the stun lands behind them, they just completely ignore it. But it's also great for cooking devastators because they die really fast when they have to face tank the laser cannon. And you can also melt heat sinks on like tanks and turrets really, really fast. So all around, the laser cannon just feels way better to use versus the bots than the terminids. Now you can use the laser guard dog, but I like replacing it with the personal shield generator, even though it got nerfed because the patch I'm making this on, the bots could shoot through walls. It really sucks that the devs ignore the automatons and pretend the terminates are the only enemies that exist and introduce more bugs to the bots in every single hotfix. Getting shot through terrain ruins any kind of immersive experience anyone can have and the flare problem has only gotten worse and forces us into a meta of mass removal and that's why only lasers is the best for pulling up to counter the spaghetti code with its own noodles. The overall big positives of the build versus the terminus are that between the sickle and the guard dog you can cook pretty much every light medium target instantly. The guard dog gives you the space and time you need to lock in with the beam and the laser cannon lets you pretty much deal with everything sub a bile titan. Having that 500 kg bomb with the rail cannon strike versus the terminates lets you take out all the armor you'll ever need and the stun grenades honestly rounded out the entire kit they make everything just so much easier and more consistent to use and against the automatons you get spam resets for the ludicrous amount of enemies that get thrown at you and you can kill everything so fast that it just feels amazing to use versus the bots. It has such an amazing balance and synergy to deal with everything on demand. The only real negative is that on hot planets your heat sinks degrade quickly so you end up getting forced to reload more but it's still less than normal weapons and one of the most important parts of this entire build is that it's really balanced and it makes you a good teammate that covers 99% of the situations you can run into letting your team have a lot more leeway and mistakes than usual while being fun thematic and cool. So I hope you all have fun with this build it's easily one of my favorites to play in the entire game and it's clearly the new broken overpowered super secret technology mega ultra meta that everybody's probably supposedly been waiting for the devs to nerf just because it's fun but that's going to be all for now and i wish you the best of luck out there <laughs> oh, i don't want to pick this shit up man